Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel Dr. Scholar. In this today's lecture, we will discuss about what is spasticity, what is rigidity and what are the differences between spasticity and rigidity. Okay, this is very important topic as far as the subject physiology is concerned, not to physiology, not only physiology, also in the subject internal medicine or general medicine and neurology, this topic is clinically very important to differentiate between the spasticity and rigidity which ultimately uh, is related to the different pathways in the central nervous system okay so spasticity is due to some uh, regions of some different tracts or rigidity is due to regions of some uh, structures of uh, different uh, uh, means uh, in the central nervous system okay so we'll try to differentiate it that then the concept will be more clear okay so we will uh, be explaining this concepts by differentiating these two terms what is spasticity and what is rigidity also it is very important question as far as your theory exams or MBBS students are concerned, okay. So let us uh, discuss the differences first. So spasticity and rigidity in both the uh, conditions there is increase in the muscle tone that is known as hypertonia. Now what is muscle tone? So muscle tone means resistance offered by the muscle to the passive movement is known as simply muscle tone. For example, this is a biceps muscle, right. So this biceps muscle it is, it is having some tone that is because of that tone it will cause a reason for example if I want to flex my elbow that is I am flexing it by contracting the biceps muscles okay so uh, passively passively suppose if I am uh, flexing this elbow joint so here some resistance I will feel it is not so smooth I can't do it very easily some resistance is offered because of some muscle tone is present in my biceps muscle when this tone is increased that is hypertonia then I will find it difficult to flex it okay so in this year both in this both the conditions spasticity and rigidity there is increase in the muscle tone or hypertonia is seen but the causes are different and the clinical presentations are different let us discuss that so in spasticity it is due to the lesions of the pyramidal tract okay let me write here so spasticity is due to the lesions of pyramidal tract pyramidal tract also known as corticospinal tract or simply we can say it as upper motor neuron lesions okay so mainly it is due to the lesions of the upper motor neurons or the pyramidal tract or the corticospinal tract most commonly uh, it involves the internal capsule okay the structure internal capsule so you can see this condition spasticity that is hypertonia due to the lesion of the pyramidal tract so or uh, it can be due to the stroke causes of lesion is it can be due to the stroke cerebral palsy or any brain injury okay hope the lesion or the cause is clear similarly rigidity rigidity is usually seen in conditions like parkinson's disease that is due to the lesions of uh, uh, lesions of uh, extra pyramidal structures like basal ganglia so lesions of basal ganglia will cause this rigidity lesions of basal ganglia so therefore it is also known as extra pyramidal rigidity so this is pyramidal rigidity this is extra pyramidal rigidity extra pyramidal rigidity extra pyramidal rigidity it is due to the lesions of the basal ganglia most commonly example parkinson's disease okay now this is due to uml lesion it is due to basal ganglia now the second difference here is spasticity only one group of muscles are involved either agonist or antagonist for example this is flexor muscles here in the upper limb in the arm and these are the extensor group that is agonist or antagonist muscles okay for most commonly flexors or upper limb and the uh, extensors of the lower limb that is the anti-gravity muscles are involved okay so we can see circumduction gait in uh, the stroke patients uh, sometimes uh, so here only one group of muscles are involved so here group means either agonist or antagonist one group of muscles is involved means either agonist or antagonist muscles usually as I said anti-gravity muscles are affected whereas in rigidity 
both uh, groups of muscles are involved that is agonist as well as antagonist simultaneously both the group of muscles both groups of muscles are involved okay so that is agonist or antagonist both group of muscles are involved okay so third difference here is so here example classically it is known as clasp knife type rigidity example or clinical presentation it will present as clasp knife rigidity in upper motor neuron regions of pyramidal tract regions whereas in the extra pyramidal tract regions or in parkinson's disease we typically we see in clinically we see lead pipe rigidity okay i'll explain you what is this clasp knife what is this uh, a lead pipe rigidity also sometimes we can also see cogwheel rigidity or cogwheel type rigidity now what is this clasp knife and all this type of rigidity so see in spasticity typically clasp knife type rigidity is seen that is an upper motor neuron region so what exactly it means so clasp knife is a type of a typical knife where it can be uh, opened and closed like that okay suppose if we are opening a closed knife so while opening you will find a greater resistance and at a certain point the resistance is lost and it can be opened very easily simultaneously if you want to uh, close it so initially you will find that resistance is more and after certain degree or certain angle or some time you will the resistance will wean off and immediately it can be closed off similarly suppose there is a hypertonia of this flexa muscles at the elbow joint so whenever you, hypertonia due to that hypertonia if we are passively moving this elbow joint so we will feel increased resistance initially but while doing that at certain point immediately the resistance will go and you will be able to flex the muscle that is tone is decrease so this type of pattern seen in upper motor neuron is known typically described as clasp knife of rigidity why it is so i have already explained in upper motor neuron lesions and lower motor neuron lesion difference please go back and check out our playlist in the subject physiology so you can make out what is the mechanism behind this okay basically it is the first hypertonia is due to the stretch reflex okay due to the stretch reflex uh, increased stretch reflex the hypertonia and uh, that uh, weaning of the hypertonia in between is due to the action of the golgi tendon reflex okay first stretch reflex that uh, golgi tendon reflex that is the tension sensitive uh, golgi tendon receptor which are present in the tendons they sense and send the message through the 1b fibers okay so details you can check there but on the other side in parkinson disease or extra pyramidal rigidity lead pipe as you already uh, we have discussed in the second point that both groups are affected here only one group are affected okay so when both groups are affected extensors as well as flexors so it will be very difficult that is full hypertonia rigid the muscles will be rigid so if you want to flex it passively you will find it resistance equally that is uh, as if you are uh, trying to bend a lead pipe okay so this is typically lead pipe rigidity and cogwheel type of rigidity means if lead pipe rigidity associated with tremors okay so in parkinson's usually there are tremors are also there so you will find the rigidity that is lead pipe rigidity in between it is like cogwheel type okay rigid lead pipe rigidity plus tremors will cause cogwheel rigidity okay now fourth and you know, one more important point here fourth point differences is so in spasticity that is spasticity is velocity and direction dependent velocity and direction dependent okay velocity and direction dependent so what does it mean velocity and direction dependent okay so the hypertonia which is present suppose again there is a hypertonia in this biceps muscles and we are passively flexing it and we are feeling the resistance okay but it is velocity dependent that means this hypertonia can be experienced or felt only when we move the when we do the passive movements at a certain velocity suppose if we are doing it very slowly we are we will not be able to feel for that hypertonia but if we are doing it very fast or with a certain velocity uh, that during that velocity we will be able to feel that uh, hypertonia similarly it is direction dependent it is an only 
uh, in a particular direction only hypertonia is felt and in that opposite direction or in some other direction this uh, hypertonia is not felt but in the uh, extra pyramidal region rigidity it is velocity and direction independent so what does it mean that is opposite to opposite to specific that, that is velocity dependent means it is stretch sensitive it is not stretch sensitive or velocity dependent it is the rigidity in extra pyramidal region will be constant throughout the range of movements and it can be felt even with the slow velocity or the slow speeds if you are doing the passive movement slowly also you will feel it rigid and even if you are doing with a greater velocity then also you will feel it rigid whereas in this plasticity only with a certain velocity you will feel the hypertonia and when you do the passive movement slowly you will not be able to appreciate that hypertonia so that means this is one of the difference then finally as I said it is due to the upper motor neuron lesion so you can see the other signs and symptoms of upper motor neuron lesions like uh, hyperreflexia and clonus can be seen and such uh, symptoms or signs may be absent in the extra pyramidal uh, tract rigidity or the Parkinson's disease. So, or uh, simultaneously we can see the other extra pyramidal uh, signs and symptoms like uh, tremors, akinesia or bradykinesia along with the rigidity. Okay, so let me revise this important differences what is spasticity and rigidity. So, in both the conditions there is increase in the muscle tone, but there are certain differences. So Spasticity is due to the lesions of the pyramidal tract also known as upper motor neuron lesions or corticospinal tract mainly the internal capsules are affected here the lesions of the basal ganglia that's why it is known as extra pyramidal rigidity then only one group of muscles are involved either agonist or antagonist here both groups agonist as well as antagonist are involved here only anti-gravity muscles generally are affected example class 5 rigidity here and here lead pipe and corbal rigidity typically seen in Parkinson's disease. Then velocity and direction dependent is seen in this plasticity whereas it is independent velocity and direction or amplitude independent in rigidity. Then other signs like type reflux and clonus are seen in spasticity such phenomena are absent in rigidity. Okay. So if you enjoy our, enjoyed our lecture so please like our video, subscribe our channel and share the link with your friends and uh, we will be making such informative videos frequently. Thank you.